Okay, good morning everybody. As uh, per our camp plan, and as we spoke these days uh, with us today, uh, Dian Milovic is co-owner and co-founder of Basketball Development Academy, and also the assistant coach in Golden State Warriors. And uh, let's just give him applause. For the As I said, you will have an opportunity to talk to him, to ask him many questions. He is very much ready to answer to all your questions and uh, just feel free to talk to him. You know, like you have opportunity just to, to ask many questions about many things about basketball development of players and uh, players that he worked and he still works with, like Steph Curry, like Nikola Jokic, I told you just about two, two superstars and you know many others. Uh, so just, just feel free, you know, like to express yourself and ask uh, all the questions that that you wish to ask. So uh, Dick is going to say a few words. And... First, I want to say welcome. You know, I'm glad glad you're here. Um, I'm going to try you know to help you as much as I can. Like I'm not present because of, of my uh, things that I have to do all, all, all the time. But all the coaches and and the banner, whatever we we are doing here, it's all together coordinated, and I'm, I, I know w w what you guys are doing and. I can assure you that the coaches that are working with you are the, the best possible, you know. So and he, is, he is one of them. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm really uh, open for any questions. And please don't be shy. Like my, my role in Golden State Warriors, I am offensive coordinator. So I'm in charge of offense mostly. And then each assistant, we have six assistants, is in charge of few players that uh, working closely with and in in Warriors I'm working closely about the individual development of the big guys that 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 we're ha that we're having Looney is one of them and Kevon Looney was the best rebounder of of NBA league last season and offensively like, I have a beautiful job imagine how nice job it is to you know work with Steph Curry and Clay Thompson about offense and you know to cooperate with them and I, I just really enjoy my job. So please don't be shy to ask me literally any questions uh, that you want. I was ex-player. Uh, I played 15 years professionally, so I have playing experience. I have coaching. I have head coaching experience. So I, I am really open to share whatever you want to know. So please, please be open. Okay. 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 So in, in this camp, in this camp, we have children from uh, many countries, starting from here. Uh, Lorenzo is from Italy. Lucas is originally from Canada and Finland, correct? Oh, great. Uh, we have girls from Prague. Uh, That's beautiful. Chen is from China. We have boy from uh, Slovenia. Tyson is from America. Oh, uh, nice. Joel Love. Love is also from out from my club, but originally from Serbia, also Australia. Uh, I'm ready. We have Dusan from Serbia. Uh, Dominic is from UK. Uh, yeah, multi multinational, multinational camp. Uh, and that's beautiful, you know. And every camp is a big experience. Like in 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 a week, you cannot become a way better players, but you're going to learn something new that you have to keep working on after. And then if you build the good habits and if, you know, you do this consistently, this is how you're going to improve yourself. But the experience of knowing different people, different culture, cultures, you know, m meeting with different coaches is priceless. So, like, I think that, you know, basketball camps are good thing for connecting people, for seeing new things, but, you know, don't expect like for, 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 for a week that, you know, you're suddenly going to become a great player because if it's so easy to become a great player in a week, everybody would be a great player. So like it's, it's not doable. But if you learn things that you should keep going and uh, you, you should keep doing and keep working on, that's how you can benefit and, and become better and better. And development is simple, guys. Like if, if uh, every season in your life if you just improve one thing just one to, to then like in five to ten years you can become a really really good player so be patient 
nothing is you know doable in, in a quick amount of time so you have to insist on some things you have to build the good habits you have to build the working habits you have to learn how to you know stand up when you fell down because it's going to be the path is always like this up and down there is no straight path so you know you have to uh, be, be, be better every day but you have to know that there is not going to be only only straight up line so you have to uh, just be patient and it's not easy being patient in life repetition is also the word yeah yeah repeating repeating what you learn yes. so let's say in this camp you learn something new you will not master it during the camp because yes. it's impossible to master something in in, in a few days yeah yes. but keep repeating keep doing keep doing keep thousands of times you know? that is the way to success if you just learn today and let's say you are quite okay with that but then you stop doing it and you stay spending time on your mobile instead of practicing outside on your own i always say this this is the, the key yeah. you understand uh, you have even when i was a player endless numbers of hours outside on my own and yes. no matter what what weather condition there is yes snow no problem 45 degrees no problem you know like still practicing shooting doing things that's that's the way there's Many only generations, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not talking negative about your generation, but remove this thing for a while from your life and do something that can be much more useful. Yeah? That's my only suggestion and that's what they will tell you as well. Yes, that, that, that's true. Like, you know, without work, you cannot achieve anything. And be open to ask coaches, ask things. Like the coach in the corner, Dragoljub Gidra, is... Hi. Yes, he's, 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 he's one of the best coaches in Serbia, you know, especially working with the young kids. You know, he was champion of Europe, right? Yes. Yes, he was champion of Europe, the national team. And, you know, he was champion of Euroleague. Yes. So for, for, for junior teams, so like, you know, you have a chance to work with a guy who was like, you know, multiple champion in, you know, this region, then in Europe, then in Euroleague. So, so you know, for sure. If you use him in the right way, he's going to be open to, you know, help. So Bane, likewise, you know, with many things accomplished. Me also, like, we are all working here as a team. So, like, please be open and, you know, whatever you learn here, you, you just have to keep doing it. Because, like, like we, we are saying, in a five days, like, it, yeah. it's not possible. Nobody can, can master, <laughs> masterize things. But you can, you can start the things, and if you start several things, then you keep doing, doing them, you know, with the time, you're going to be really good at that. Okay, so let's, let's talk, guys. Let's make it busy. <laughs> Maybe it's too early for them, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, they didn't sleep well. <laughs> no, they are waiting for the first one to start. Okay, here it is. Please stand up. Which player did you see develop most on the Warriors roster? Uh, I'm, I'm really satisfied without being modest what, what we did with Looney. Because when I came to Warriors like two years ago, he was good rebounder, but not elite. So like when we were thinking what we can improve, because development is like you have to. That's part of the coaches who can advise you because uh, every player can be good in some things. Like if I was one type of player, if I wanted to be like Steph Curry, I cannot because it's not my my skill and I'm not talented in, in this way. But you have to recognize what some player could do. So, you know, working with Loon, we, we, we realized that he can be way better rebounder because of the body type that he is, because of the type of the game that he has. So he starts working on, you know, positioning, how he's going to box out, how he's going to, you know, be on, in which position, where the ball is going to bounce, because uh, there, in rebounding there is a lot of, science like like uh, you know physics where the ball gonna bounce uh, and you can recognize if the shot is stronger or weaker you know where can you reposition to get this rebound and people think that you know the best rebounders are people usually who bounce a lot and that's not true because you know the best rebounder gonna be the guy who is best positioned to catch a ball so you can work on, on rebounds 
that you can analyze where the ball going to bounce, depend which shooter is shooting from which position. Dennis Rodman is the guy, the older player, you don't know probably who he is, but he was one of the best rebounders of NBA of all time. And he is the guy who inspired me to start implementing these things in my game when I was a player. And then now, as a coach, I'm trying to transfer this to the players that, that, that I'm working with. Uh, so he, he developed a lot. Jordan Poole, who is now traded to, to uh, Washington Wizards, he developed a lot from like G League player. He became NBA champion last season. So I think his development is remarkable. But before, before me coming to Warriors, all the players that are superstars now are drafted from the Warriors and developed at, at Warriors. So Steph Curry is drafted from Warriors. Clay Thompson is drafted by Warriors. Uh, and Draymond Green is drafted by Warriors. Kevon Loon is drafted by Warriors. So like, Warriors has a good record of drafting and developing people. And I hope we're going to continue doing the good job like we're doing. Okay, excellent. Next question. Chen, he is a big fan of Steph Curry. Yes, Chen, go on. I just can ask. Um, what do you feel like um, Warriors had like seven point guards right now? Uh, please please uh, f formulate better questions. So what I feel about... Like they had a lot of point guards right now. We, we have a lot of point guards. Yeah, they, you guys have uh, a lot of point guards. But, but I, I'm not saying that we have many point guards. Tell me which point guards we have. Uh, I think Kevin Looney is the tallest in uh, Warriors right now. Yeah, ah, you, ah, you are talking about the size. Yeah. Ah, so like, I think size doesn't matter. Okay. You know, size doesn't matter. Like, it's, it depends who you can guard. And for example, Draymond Green is a 6'6". Six, six. I think maybe he is shorter than me. I'm 6'6". Six, six. I believe he's 6'5". He's in, in, in the paper, it's 6'6", six, six, but I don't think he's 6'6". Six, six. But he can guard everybody. So the point is, size doesn't matter. It matters who you can guard. And I think we have enough players. Da Dario Saric is now the big man that we have. He's 6'9". So we, yes, we don't have seven footers, but I think we are pretty capable of you know, guarding anybody even with the size that we have. So like, this doesn't matter. Okay. You, wait, wait, wait. I, I feel you want to ask something else, so please, please open. Like, yeah. Jen is shy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's have conversation, guys. You, you know, know, like, you, know, you, know that, you know what type of, of boy he is. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, his coach. Like, he's quiet, so, but he scores 25 points easily. Uh, and you don't know that he scores 25 uh, points. That, that's nice. He's uh, quiet in life, quiet on the court, uh, but, uh, you know, like this kind of... Uh, and please imagine, like, you're talking with some friend so sitting in a cafe, yeah. and, and, you know, be open. I'm feeling that you're shy, so don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm still thinking. I will ask like a question later. Okay. Something about uh, Kerry? Yeah. Huh? No. You want to ask something about Steph? What he's doing? How he's practicing? You know what? What, what he's planning? Okay. Tell, tell us about Steph. Like when we were talking last night, I'm getting the boys were here. Yeah. Uh, about Steph. About what kind of person he is. For, yeah, like first oh, out, outside, uh, outside the court, let's say, yeah. you know, a couple of things. So, f first thing is that he's big, biggest star in our organization, without any doubt. Like wherever we go, I think hundred plus people is waiting him in front of the hotel, screaming, wanted to you know some, some signatures, you know, wanted signature in jersey, wanted picture with him, and for me. This part of his life is very hard. Like I, I don't know, you know how he's taking it because he is not free to do, you know, anything beside, you know, uh, beside court, and it's not easy because of fan, because of the fans, and he has his security with him all the time. But he's such a normal, approachable guy. So even with like 50, 100 people waiting for him, uh, many times he, he he just go go to them and you know start, you know. Stay, you know, f for half hour signing jerseys and, and, and some cards and whatever, it matters. And for us coaches, is, he's amazing because, you know, he's open and approachable. So, uh, for example, if I'm working and talking with him, he's really, really approachable. Not many superstars in NBA are that nice like, like he is. So, so he's really amazing person, genuine, 
you know, humble person, and I, I'm really happy that we have this kind of superstar in our team because if you have this kind of person as a best player, then the other players that are following him are going to go in line, and we, we don't have any problem with the personality issues that you know some some people and some organization have. So we are really blessed, and Steph, of course, you know, is a winner. He he likes winning. He likes practicing, and. Even he won like f four championships and being, uh, he achieved everything possible. Like every uh, title that, that, that you, you, you can possibly get, he has. So he was finals MVP, so league MVP. He was, I think, Olympic champion, world champion. He was NBA champion several times. He was leading scorer. He was, he is best three-point shooter of all time. So, and he's still hungry for more. He wants to be better and better and setting, you know, challenging him, himself and setting a new records. And, you know, that was really amazing, these playoffs, the game seven that we played against Sacramento, where, when, where he scored 50 points uh, at game seven away. That was a record, but for a short time because Jason Tatum, uh, he, he broke the record. He scored 51 points in game seven after. But but imagine you know how, how hard it is and how easy for him is to to push the limits every time. So he is now 30, I think four, I think he's 34, 35, and he is still playing on elite level. His body is great, and I'm really expecting that he's going to play on elite <laughs> level for for several seasons more for sure. So amazing guy. Okay, now for example. Young players, they like to shoot as soon as they enter the gym for training, they start shooting three-point shots, yeah? Uh, they start shooting from far, etc., etc. Tell them what Steph Curry does. Steph Curry, like, the, the, about development is, now in, in your age, you have to do a bit different, like he did, because you have to make a perfect form of your shot. So you have to do a lot of repetition, when you shoot that your shot becomes like automatic shot. And then when you achieve that, and it can be only done by endless repetitions. Like first coach have to, have to set you the, the, the good form. And then when you have a good form, you have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And then when you achieve uh, automatic shot that you are shooting without thinking on a perfect way, then you have to do on a game-like situation shots. And this is what Steph Curry is doing now. He's shooting the shots that he's going to shoot in a game. He does, doesn't shoot spot ups a lot. He has some, but just you know to keep the form intact, like like, like he, he 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 has. But he's shooting now situations only that he's going to do in a game. So this is like a path. This is trajectory that you have to have. So you have to work on your form, and then when you achieve form, then you have to work on a game like situations. And this is. How development is going. Okay. Okay, one question for them. When uh, the legend about you, this is the strong man in basketball in Serbia, this is Dan Milovic. When I uh, was young, uh, this legend, legend about you, you made uh, gin in your home. <laughs> yeah. Correct or not? <laughs> it, 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 it is sort of like I was lifting weights a lot. Yeah, I was lifting weights a lot, so when I was not super young player, but I had like, I think, 19, 20 years. So instead of my kitchen, I had a bench press and a gym. So I was lifting weights every day in between practices. So like Bana said, you have to, uh, you have to keep doing things in a gym with coaches, but you have to work also when you come home, like, you know, by yourself. So you have to push yourself to the limits. and. Well, it makes 150 kilograms, I think. <laughs> this was more. <laughs> but the, 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 point, the point is you have to push yourself to work as much as you can. You have to be ambitious, you know, and this is the only way for you to be successful. Hi, Gil. Hi, everybody. Can you tell us something from your experience? Hi. Hvala. Uh, can you tell us something uh, from your experience as a father, uh, ex-player, coach, uh, uh, about impact 
of the playing basketball and practicing basketball on our future life, uh, future education, um, uh, just impact I, I, on, on, I, I on, ba on basic stuff like I don't know discipline or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because yeah. your your son is uh, he's playing basketball also in college. Yeah? Yes, my son. Thank you. Uh, I have son, 21, 22 years old, and he's playing now at Hawaii Pacific University in USA, and. This is my advice to many, many young, young kids, young players. What you, should you do after when your youth basketball finish? I always say you go to America if you can to finish college. Why? It gives you education and basketball at the same time. And I wouldn't say America if there is any other country when you can do the same thing. But the America is only country that allows you to go you know, to play basketball on a high level and to finish school because uh, not many players become successful in basketball. Like uh, the percentages are so low and I don't want to uh, discourage anybody, but I'm going to give you the example that total in NBA history, like NBA exists for 75, 70, now six, seven years, something like that. And only 4,000 people played in the league all time. So 4,000. And imagine how many million kids per year dream to become NBA players. And only 4,000 in 76 years succeeded. Actually, actually succeeded. So I think the higher percentage is to win lottery than to become NBA player. And you have to be aware of that. You have to, you know, try and you have to try to become and it's great if you become but you cannot forget about your education and you know to, to become you know you, you can do two things in the same time so because of your dreams of becoming a basketball player you can you cannot for, forget that being well educated is your insurance because the knowledge is the only thing that nobody can take out from you like you can lose your shirt, your wallet, your money, your apartment, your whatever, but you cannot lose your knowledge. So knowledge is really, really important and you cannot, you know, uh, f forget about being well educated. So my advice is for everybody, doesn't matter how good you are in sports, you always have to, you know, go to school and try to be best educated because there is like a thousands of people that were talented, that were good, but they had some really bad injury and their career is over. And even if you have a career, it's short. Like you are finishing, if you become a pro and you play for 10, 50, 15 years, then you get to 32, 3, 4, 5, 8, whoever, and then you quit playing and then there is another part of life after so what you going to do after so yeah so you are too young to understand that what i'm telling you so you're going to understand in in several years but please believe me that school is super important even you don't understand i didn't understand it when i was you know lifting yeah and you lift. yes <laughs> <laughs> i i didn't understand how school was important when i was you know, youth, when I was young. But now when you get older, you, you, you understand, you know, how, how important it is. Yeah. yeah. Great question, Gidra. Uh, hi, my name is Dejan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm from Prague. I'm a coach from Prague and the father also. Oh, great. So I have a daughter here. Uh, we have a big debate. Uh, what I come on in Czech Republic all the time, um, how often the children should train. It's a big debate. I think it's a big problem. I, I agree with you. Uh, they all the time try to stop them that they don't. Uh, overtrained, they are not burnt out. Um, they talking about that three times a week it's enough for one, one and a half hour. And, uh, and then they expect that they will have results. And of course, when you have a, there is a club, there is a lot of kids, there is not so much 
a space for individual training, what is most important in, uh, in uh, development of the players, I think. So uh, what you can tell us about this? I remember my daughter was asking you this last, last year. Uh, but I want that people are thinking about this, that they heard this from somebody like you, that there yes. is no development without practicing, constantly practicing. Yes. So uh, you uh, already uh, said something like this. Yes, but uh, I, I want to be pretty clear, like, there has to be balance. Like, uh, when I was younger, the idea was the more is better, and it's not. So we, were, we had a lot of injuries, we, uh, our careers were short, I quit at 32, and now Chris Paul that we signed is 39 and he's playing on a late level, but the coaches were killing me with the uncontrolled practice that I was practicing a lot. And, that, and what means a lot, I want to be like, I was practicing basically three times per day. So like six hours, six, six to hours. six, six hours. That's terrible. That's so that's bad. <laughs> so you don't do that. So I, when you say three times per week, I, I think that's not enough. So I, I, I want to say like every day you have to practice no more than two hours, in my opinion, depend what you do. And it's that, 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 that really matters most is what you do because uh, you can do wrong things as much as you want and you're not going to improve. So, the, when, and when I say two hours, again, it's not like two hours, uh, I'm talking about the kids because kids are going to school and you have a school and you have some practice. But I feel that kids are for, forgetting going out and playing street ball with friends and for me that's a huge part of development. And this is what you should do, training on your own. But I don't, I don't like young kids your age be, before becoming like a serious pro, professional players are practicing more than once per day. And that doesn't mean I'm, I'm talking with the team. And then like, if I know that I've finished school, for example, at 2, 3 p.m., I don't know how now school is organized in your country. Yeah, so so I, I, I was talking, for example, you finish school and then you have practice at the evening, there is a time that you go out for yourself and do something. And now it's way easier than before. Why? You can find on the internet so many nice things and nice practices that you can do and you can figure out some things and you can try those things and you know you, you can see if it's a good fit or not. But you can get ideas. Like 20 years ago we didn't have any of those things and you know you have to be creative or, or, or you had to be you know, to find somebody to, to show you something. Now you, you have approach to all kinds of informations, clinics, like you can, you can go if you want, like you just tip, type in, tip in, in Google, like, you know, develop on a few youth players and you're gonna have dozens of lectures and practices. So you can find some, I don't say it's, it is good, but I'm just saying that you can get approach to some information that you can do on your own. And for me, playing against your friends, players, is what is making you better. So I love street ball, I love three on three, and I think you should play this as much as you can at your off time. Off time means not team practice, not, not, uh, you know, and, and not school. So I'm against practicing like crazy. I, I feel that you have to have rest, but I'm against not practicing. Like three times per week for me, it's not enough. It's, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not the sport in the end. Yes. It's, it's recreation. recreation. And, and again, depends which age. Like when the kid is super young, then three times per day it's, it's fine. Like it, because if you overload young kids, then maybe it's going to be boring to them and they say, oh, I'm not going to do this. So like I, I think when you... Yeah, 14, 15 years. No, no, that, 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 that's, that's too low. But I'm talking about kids starting at seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, seven, you know, you cannot yeah, practice every day with, yeah, yeah. you know, such a young kid. Yeah. So, because it has to be fun. And what you say, it's not fun. For me, practices should be fun. You have to have fun on a practice. Because if you feel under pressure going to practice, not loving going to the practice, it's not going to work. So, practice should be fun. And fun doesn't mean not being serious. Fun is competition. Competition is fun. You have to compete. Doesn't matter if it's against yourself. So what means competing about your, with yourself? 
Today I'm going to make like five shots out of 10. Tomorrow I'm going to make six shots out of 10. So I, I'm, I'm, I want to push myself and compete with myself to be better and better every day, to, to set the high goals and compete with myself. And then if, this is when you're alone. And then when you have your friend with you, I say, okay, let's compete. Who going to reach first up to 10 or whatever you can say. But competing is the fun part of the sport. So try to compete. Compete with yourself. You know, today's children, I'm sure you have, you have experience as well. They go for training, they try to train, and they don't know how to train. Right. They, waste, they waste their time a lot. I see, let's say, two kids on the court with two balls independently shooting, shooting totally unreasonably from, from about six and a half, seven, seven and a half meters. Not even having, they don't set, you know, when you train, you have to set up target. You have to know what you want, guys. That's very important. As Dan said, if you are today shooting five out of ten, set up a target in a week, maybe you shoot six out of ten or seven out of ten. Always try to reach target. My target when I was a young player was, let's say, 500 shots a day when I was your age. If I don't shoot 500 shots, I won't sleep. And again, no matter what weather condition are outside, I'm going to shoot. Minus 17 in Belgrade, I was shooting. Snowing, I just go out of the snow, you know, and. Uh, Neighbors around there, hey boy, go back home, I'm crazy, you know, like, it's cold, you know, go home, you know, you know. no, I have to take my 500 shots. And, and what means? Very cold um, weather, yeah. plus 45, in most of Bosnia and Herzegovina, where basically those days it was Yugoslavia, 45 degrees, I still have to shoot my 100, 500 shots. Tarmac is melting under my feet, melting, literally my footsteps are on the tarmac. Every time, you know, like I step, you know, I shoot, I move, you know, I see my, my shoes, you know. But 500, 500 shots have to be taken. That's what it's all about, guys. You have to be determined to what you want. Just do it. When you go for training, you say, sometimes I hear children, oh, you know, he's practicing for four hours, five hours. You have to, five hours or five hours standing, wherever, whatever you do, it's too much. Believe me. Do two hours, two proper hours of training and go home. Yes. And, and, and what he said, like, he's seeing kids shooting some, some you know, funny shots, whatever. I'm not against it, but it cannot be majority of your practice. Exactly. So like, we all, we all want to have fun. So yeah, I want to shoot half court shots. I want to shoot like some tricky shots. I want to have fun because basketball should be fun. Yeah, well, but, but you cannot have like half hour of these shots. Yeah. You can have like 10 minutes if, 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 you're, if you go on a court. So like, do majority of your shots of things that you're going to do, you do game-like game situations. So you know what you're doing in a game and don't try to improve in the same time too many things. So like you focus on something and then you try to improve. Also it. compete against each other. If you're two, three, four on the court, compete against each other. Yes. All the time. We're all the time competing. All the time competing. Like, like sort of everyday competition. Prepare you for games as well. Yes. Hi. Uh, hello, my name is Bogdan. Um, I would like to return on your player playing career because uh, I'm someone that really likes to watch podcasts and clinics about the basketball and in what po podcast I catch a really nice thing about you because uh, I think personally that today kids are searching for the glory mm -hmm. about basketball and in what podcast you for me you said nicest thing as, uh, about the playing that you choose more playing and enjoying in basketball than the glory in money. And can you please tell to the kids, because it's really something nice that people need to know, and kids like kids need to know that, for me, now you achieved, and even as a player, you achieved the glory, but it wasn't a path that everyone would choose. Uh, it's, you have to have some motivation, and we are all different people, so we have different motivation, but you cannot be without motivation. And uh, usually, if you become a good player, Everything, everything comes with it. So like this money and, and, and fame or whatever usually follows, you know, if, if you play good. But like I said, not many players achieve, you know, high level or whatever. So for me, there always should be a choice that you actually play. So if you, if you have two teams that you can play for and one team is better, but you have less minutes on the court and one team is you know, worse, but you have more minutes on the court, I would choose the worst team, 
with the more minutes on the court because I believe in playing and I think that you know it's better to be the, the guy with the more more minutes on the court and, uh, than, than in team good team that you don't play at all. So like now there is a balance. So like if you play a role in a good team, then it's better than you know the main role in a bad team. But it's b way different if you know you have a ro good role in a bad team and no role in a in a good team. So so you have to you know balance that. And I always picked playing because I love basketball. I, I love playing, uh, and I always follow my heart. So and then usually the all these things that people are looking for, they they follow you. So so it's, you're not going to get away from that. But you know, pick always to play. That's my advice. That's me again. Okay. <laughs> I, I, yes, In your uh, last season, like yeah. basketball player, you signed for Partizan, yeah. right? And uh, you start could, the contract yes. and tell your coach, Dusko Jošević, coach, my uh, knee is yeah. very weak and must stop the career. This yeah. is true or false? Yeah, it's true. Uh, I felt that I can't play. Even I was pretty young for a player, like 32, I was not super old. I was two, three years younger than Steph Curry now. But my body was damaged because of the bad practices that I had. Like, like I said, I was practicing six to eight hours when I was younger, and it's simple too much. So this is too much. You, you shouldn't do that. That's not good for you. That's you beg the money. You beg yeah, the money. I didn't, it's I, very I, honor. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because you know, I, I, I understood that you know, I cannot play on a level that I expect for myself personally. And I didn't feel well about my body because my body was damaged, my knees were hurting me because of the uh, improper practice. So practicing on a bad way, it can damage your body and it's not good for you. And this is telling you the guy who tried this on himself. <laughs> so, Basically, yeah, he's yeah. very honest, right? Yeah. He didn't want to take money from the club and have sort of season without yes. playing and not contributing. Yes. To his team. So that, that's what it's all about. Yeah? Yes. It's very important in life to, to be very honest. I believe Of course. Too. Of course. Love. I do. Girls, you're sleeping, girls. Oh. Hi, I'm Love. Uh, did you know that you were going to become a coach before, like, at the end of your career? No. I, I thought I'm not going to be a coach, but the circumstances in my life, you know, opened me the path and I understood how nice it, I, I now love coaching more than playing to be fair because there is really great feeling when you transfer knowledge to, to you know someone and you see him improving that's really great feeling for me and some people think that if you are a good player then automatically you can become a good coach and that's not true because it's so, so, it, it, it's not the same knowing something and transferring knowledge. So some people, they know something, but cannot, they cannot transfer the knowledge. And that's all about coaching job. Coaching job is like a sum of many things. And if you are not a good uh, guy to transfer the knowledge, you, you, cannot, you cannot improve people. So. That is huge, huge satisfaction. Yes. Like when you're yes. coaching, and me, I was a player because of the injury. I had to stop playing. I started coaching, basically. If you ask me if I plan to be coach, no. Yeah. It was pure coincidence that, that yes. I became coach. Anyway, I won't go to that. But for example, your case, Slav, uh, you started playing basketball basically about two years ago, yeah? You came to my club from Waterpolo. And you were good material. I could see that I could work with you. But you remember your first training sessions? Shooting like Waterpolo player. <laughs> like, I spent about 10 training sessions doing this to him, you know? like. Put the elbow in, you know, this is basketball, man. You know, like, love again. <laughs> Let's go back. Yeah. I mean, last year he was the player of the of this See, year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's, so that's basically awesome. So, we did, we did great job in a year and then maybe a few months. So, uh, Gr girls are quiet, you know. So did, did you saw, did you saw that? Something uh, called satisfaction. Yeah, that's that true. Coaches have when they're developing this is, this is This is great. Yeah. I'm talking also about it. Huh? Yeah, girls are, girls are, did you, did, did you saw now that the girl, uh, broke record on three-point shooting, you know, uh, they, uh, she shoot better than Steph Curry on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on competition. And, and I'm sure, you know, that he's going to now push himself to break the record on the next 
Stay from the position. What? Is it just the ball smaller? Yeah, the, the rim is the same. Yeah, the, the, for women basketball, the, the ball, but it's still, yeah, it's still, you know, it's not easy to achieve what she, what she did and huge respect for her. You know, it's not easy, you know, making all, all those consistent shots with the uh, speed that he's shooting, she's shooting. Because it's not like she has the time to, you know, figure out and to focus. It was just uh, automatically shooting. So, like, it's a great success that she did. Hi. Uh, do you know something about the women basketball, uh, women NBA, the development, the future? Yeah, I, I, I cannot say that I'm fully in, but I know, I know a lot now my friend from Warriors, Nick Uran. He became a general manager of Phoenix Mercury. So, so, and then we were talking about how the league goes over there. And I was surprised that the league is only four months. So it's not easy for them to organize, even in women's NBA, to organize a full season because when you finish in the four months, then eight months, it's it's long time to do. So many play, players are going abroad here overseas to, to, to play in Europe or China. Japan, you know, to, to, to play basketball. So they are thinking now how they can change NBA to last longer. But, you know, NBA is a business and women's NBA is still not profitable. So, like, I'm sure they're going to figure out how they're going to make a good profitable model and, you know, playing because it's interesting. And there is so many, so many good players in women's NBA that, that I like to watch. Uh, I heard something about the NBA in Europe, the league NBA. You know something about that? No, there is so many ideas and talks, and they are trying to include many things, but the problem is the time difference. And I don't know how they're going to overcome that, because from New York and Europe, there is six hours difference. From West Coast, where I'm living, is nine hours. And it's not easy, the travel, travel part is hard. So even if you go and play like a road trip, because this is how NBA is organized. Like I'm from West and I'm, when we are flying to the East, then we play several games on the East Coast, then we go back. So maybe it's, it, it can be you go to Europe, but it's still not easy because of time difference, because now I'm here, I came from the States like a week ago and I'm still under jet lag, I cannot sleep, you know? So I, I'm sleepy in the middle of the day and, Overnight, I cannot sleep. So. Having many talks. I mean, I've been in London yeah. for a long, long most time. And question: <laughs> You, Nikola Jokic, is your player. You when you coach in yeah. Basel Club Mega, and now relationship with Nikola Jokic when uh, the MVP NBA <laughs> is the same. 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 He's my friend. He's my he's my player. But I don't treat players differently. That my friends, they're my friends. So, so whoever I coach, I, I became friends with and you know, now we are friends. So I'm really happy that Jokic is the now NBA champion and he became the best player in the league. And it's so, so awesome, you know, seeing the kid that I had in, when he was 17, that he developed now in best player in the league. So like I said, the, the, the reward for the co coach when seeing the, pl the player improve is, is amazing. And, you know, for me, that's, Priceless. I love. Oh, yeah, so uh, uh, I want to ask you if you miss your time coaching Mega and Uh I, I, yeah, yeah, I like all my you know, stage of my career. Like in Mega, I was working with the younger players. In Bluchonst, I was working with the old, old, older players. But still, you, I have fun coaching. So for me. I equally like, and now I'm not trying to avoid uh, answers what I like more, but for me, I like equally all the parts, you know, of yeah. my coaching job, even coming here, you know, and talking with you guys, for me, it's super fun. I wouldn't do that if I, if I feel differently. So, you know, I would say, Bane, I, I'm busy, I'm tired, you know, I cannot do that. But I love coming here, you know, and talking with the guys, because if, if you can learn, you know, hear one thing that maybe can change your, you know, habits and attitudes and whatever, then we did a good job. So I'm trying to help. Girls, any questions from girls' side? Come on, don't be shy. I can speak Czech, I can translate them all. 
when you girl the <laughs> weight a couple of words about legendary legendary speak and finally Radio Korač Cup you talked with uh, player shooting guard Nikola Ivanović and I <laughs> remember very good speak you must continue to sh <laughs> yeah. this is this is the nice nice, nice thing that that he's saying. Like I said, there is no straight path in, in, in your career. So, same thing is on a game. You can play and play bad. You can shoot and you, you miss every shot. But you cannot stop shooting good shots. So, what that means, if you're in a good open position, doesn't matter if you missed like few in a row, you have to, you know, keep shooting. And I was coach, coaching Mega and this player, Nikola Ivanovic, who is, you know, really, really good player, he was missing. And I was telling him, like, to, I was insisting that he keep shooting because it, you know, eventually he will start making shots. And he did that and we won title because, because of that, because he was, you know, uh, he kept shooting and I supported him. And, you know, it turned out well. And I was always supporting my players. I never allow somebody being selfish and taking bad shots, but if you are open, if you are in a position that you are practicing and it's your shot, you should take it regardless of, you know, missing or making. And this is, in America, Steph Curry has one line say, next play, next play. What means next play? It means doesn't think about previous things, think about next play, what you're going to do. So you cannot be, if you missed a few times in a row, you cannot think about those misses because those misses are going to stop you from making the next shot. And same thing you can transfer to your life. You know, with school, if you, you know, fail one test, that doesn't mean that you're going to fail another. So you have to stop thinking about that one and you have to go to the next one. And same is just next play. Okay, guys, if there are no more questions, are there any more questions? Okay, shall we go for training? We prepare for training at 11 p.m. training. Okay, it was really my pleasure. I know, and I, I really, I'm happy seeing you guys here. Okay, thank you.